Hi everyone, this is a mini lecture on the movie Hedwig and the Angry Inch, a John Cameron Mitchell picture based on the stage musical written by him and Stephen Trask. The spoilers are quite light, but I suggest watching the film first and then forming your own ideas before exploring the lecture. My thesis for this video is that filmmakers possess a power that the stage director might not. And no disrespect to stage directors, they have an immensely difficult job to articulate complex ideas on a stage, taking into account the varied positions of the audience members. But the power the film director has is the bringing together of several forms of media. The film director, in contrast to the stage director, commands a power of the frame. Film directors don't just frame a shot, they frame opinions, and sometimes people. Inasmuch that Bob Fosse holds a command over how he is seen in the movie All That Jazz, for example, and how he controls our impression of his critics, depicting them in an unflattering light, John Cameron Mitchell exposes a lot of his own frustration about societal acceptance, and sometimes even rejection from his own community, depicting himself, or the surrogate of himself, in a position of power, standing on a soapbox, criticizing his detractors. For example, the people staring dumbly at the restaurant during his performance might be seen as a depiction or illustration of bigotry, ignorance, or intolerance. Mitchell uses his first-person comedic voiceover to score, as music might, what's going on on screen, often accompanying his viewers on the journey like a harlequin, a gender-bending and film format-bending tour guide through his life. He uses the film medium, just like Bob Fosse in All That Jazz, as a critical tool, both filmmakers use the camera and film to speak back to their own critics. Hedwig uses cinema verite as a style, much like all that jazz. This technique can be seen in the roving documentary style camera, the patchwork of different film formats, and the raw, unfiltered audio, which sounds like it's being picked up by an on-camera mic. This movie also possesses a documentary aesthetic, because of its eclectic casting of interesting, real people actors. The music was recorded live in the actual space they filmed in to create a semblance of realness. If you're curious about Cinema Verite, I am linking to another video on Cinema Verite below. Hedwig is also a metafilm, and I've included a quick video on the metafiction down below in the links as well. In the film, Hedwig draws attention to the movie's overall artificiality, and explores the relationship between the film, our shared reality, and the author's own experiences. In addition, Hedwig's voiceover poses questions that only the viewer can hear or answer. The split screens and the animations created by the brilliant Emily Hubley take us into the head of the filmmaker, a place that you can't really get to in a traditional narrative. And the actor, using his own body to visually invade his own fantasy, allows the film to function as a didactic tool to teach or initiate the viewer into the world, anxieties and all, of a genderqueer person. What results is a movie that is like an epic music video. What would you say is the difference between a filmed musical and a music video? It's hard to answer this. Perhaps these days the lines are blurred, but music video transcends the editing of a film. It is comprised essentially of images cut as a montage over a seamless piece of audio. This gives the movie yet another lane of intersectionality when it comes to genre and medium. If you like this video, feel free to comment below on what aspects of the movie spoke to you. Hedwig and the Angry Inch is a movie about what it means to be a fragmented and fractured human being. And by fragmenting and fracturing the film, the film as a piece of media itself serves not only as an interesting entry into the musical genre, but also as a metaphor for the character. Thanks for watching.